partner. You know what I'm saying? Partner in crime. And it, it meshed good. It worked out real good. It worked out 100% to where that album what it did what it did. So I'm pretty sure it worked out. Was the uh, contract only for a one album deal? No. We'll get into that. <laughs> Can you Next can question. you disclose? <laughs> well, you know, of course, the record industry is the record industry, right? And things look good in the beginning, you know what I'm saying? And then once you get halfway through, shit shifts. I'm on. The, I'm busy. I'm busy. Way busy. Back out, please. <laughs> Kids, don't listen. No I love them to death. But um, things shifted, and. It went south, you know what I'm saying, and you know that's what that's happened. Okay. <laughs> you know what I'm um, at this time, uh, signing that contract, how did life change for DYS? You, you get brought back to earth real quick, you know what I'm saying. But that album left me with a platform. You know what I'm saying. It left me with a platform that I that I could forever stand on in the game, and I took that to heart. You know what I'm saying? I, I never, I was like, yeah, if I can do this, I can do this still. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, I kicked back, you know, did, you know, Mini Vo did a bunch of records and, you know, did, did a bunch of, you know, stuff during this whole process and still are doing stuff. You know what I'm saying? But right now, as of now, I'm on, I'm, I'm fooling with DYs right now, but, you know, the bums are the bums. We're still the bums. Don't ever get it twisted. You know what I'm saying? It's, there's no break in the bums. We just grown ass men and we got so much stuff that we can still do in the game other than, you know, being as far as a group. But, you know, right. the bums are still, still the bums. So don't get it twisted. Just let everybody know out there the bums are still here. And we still got shit. Going back to that debut album, um, you had guys like Joe Quicks, uh, Baker Boys, King Tech, Fred Wreck on the album. What was DY's? looking for sonically to bring out the best in him? I, I've always had an ear for music. So, I, I, you know, I would meticulously be like, yeah, this is, this is cool, but it's not like what we need. We need that out of the box shit. You know what I'm saying? I, I know we're from Oakland and a lot of people thought that we were from back East, but you know, I say, man, if you listen to what we're saying, we're strictly talking about the Bay Area. You know what I'm saying? We, we definitely stay 100% of where we're from. We just rap it different. You know what I'm saying? And um, But Joe Quicks, that son of a bitch, he was just throwing shit at me. It was like, you know, because he's so laid back. You know what I'm saying? He, he, he talks like he's a jazz musician. You know what I'm saying? He's like, yeah, man, check this out. I'm pretty sure you're going to vibe with this. You know, that's how he was. And, you know, Fred Wreck, He's high energy musically, you know what I'm saying? The Baker Boys, Savages, you know what I'm saying? Back, Just imagine back then, you know what I'm saying, the 90s, mixed with Savages. And me being in my early 20s and having an ear for that high level music, it was like almost like kind of melancholy, like, D, you got an ear for this kind of shit. And it's like, you know what I'm saying? You got a real high level. So we meticulously would pick, and they would pick too. You know what I'm saying? They, so Swain Tech, they always had a hearsay. Of like, nah, you need this. This is what you need. And so we, after we would record the record, then we go, okay, I get it. I get it. So we all had a, we all had a, a hundred percent of, of, you know, advice and control and what we did. How, um, how was it writing with Evo? Did you guys um, compliment each other or was there a lot of disagreements as far as... Uh... Oh, yeah. Fuck yeah. You gotta bump heads every day. Fuck yeah. Right. yeah those damn near blows. Uh, <laughs> you, you, you do that with your brother. You know what I'm saying? Right. You do that with your brother. You know what I'm saying? Just like you do it with your sister, your mom, your pops, anybody you deal with in life. Uh, but we used to do a lot of writing apart. Like, we'll call each other. And I'll spit, you know, he'll be like, whoever starting the verse off was always the, the first one to call and be like, yo, this is what I got. And then I'll hear what he got. Then I go, all right, I'll call you back. Or he'll do the same thing. Or if, you know, we can never write 
in the same room. I, I can't, I, I just never been that kind of writer. You know what I'm saying? I need to go off to the corner, give me my own headphones or whatever I got to write with. I'll do it that way. I'll give me the concept and I'll run with it. But as far as writing in the same, you know, surroundings, I've never been that kind of writer. You know what I'm saying? But, but once it's done, when I go in that booth, <laughs> It, it all it all clicks. But, you know, we never could write together. It's always been he's over there, I'm over there, or he's at home, I'm at home. And that's how it worked. So that's how we kept it. Can you hear me clearly? Yeah, I got you. Yeah. Can you hear me? Can you hear we me? We good? Yeah, we good. Okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the album turns 25 in June. Does it seem like that long ago? Shit, yeah. <laughs> Look at the fucking gray hairs. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but what's crazy about it is that that record still gets love you know what i'm saying and it's like some people hit me up in my inbox or if i happen to hashtag something and they're like yo man i was 16 when i got that record i still got it in my deck to this day you know what i'm saying and it's crazy that 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 record influenced and helped a lot of people you know what i'm saying from two oakland boys one from east oakland one from north oakland so hell yeah man i i, I love every every year it ages and, I, and, and that I'm alive to still get the acc you know, the accolades for it. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, um, I always ask my guests this because you, uh, you came out in such a, uh, a golden time, '95. Um, can you give me your best tour memory? Oh man, shit, so many of them, and, and maybe a lineup. I remember seeing you guys in Chicago oh. in '95 at the Elbow Room. Oh yeah, yeah, we, we we got down there. That was that night. That was that night. Evolve just stopped rhyming and just started dancing. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He was feeling that good. Um, man, we the lineups were so crazy for us for us to be out there. You know, we, we we toured with some heavyweights, man. We got to you know we got to perform with Big, Cypress Hill, Wu Tang, um, everybody, man. Conscious Daughters, Rally Row, uh, Helter Skelter, everybody, man. You know, and we came from that era that we got in at the right time. You know what I'm saying? That we got to be a part of that pioneerish era. You know what I'm saying? For for hip hop, like this is where this shit comes from. You know what I'm saying? Right. So so you new cats take a lesson. You know what I'm saying? But we still here. You know what I'm saying? You got cats, you know, me and Evos and, and cats from my era, they, we still out here. You know what I'm saying? It's not like because we did the one album that we, we, we had, we're not relevant. You know what I'm saying? The music that we did, you can go back 25 years and listen to it and go like, damn, I remember this shit. You know, I can listen to a J. Rue The Damage. I can listen to a, um, a E-40 record 20 years from now you know, at maybe 65 and still maybe know some of the lyrics. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because it's from my right. era. That's just like, it's like the, everybody that was in the 50s and 60s, when they hear the, the Motown sound at their age now, they still know the lyrics. So I'm, I'm blessed to come from that era. Blessed. <laughs> After uh, completing that album, did you get everything done on that album that you wanted to do? Was there a producer missing, a guest appearance that you wanted? Did everything come out? And were you pleased with that album? With the Life and Time album? Yes. Yeah, I, I wish we could have. Um, we didn't really have too many features. We had a. We had a. We only had like maybe one or two features on the album. We had Mystic on the album. She was really not like what do you think. She was really like the only feature on the album. You know what I'm saying? She was on the title track, Life and Time. But then a lot of features wasn't really going on. It was, you know, like it was in the EPMD era. You know what I mean? So it was always, you know what I'm saying? If they did do a feature, it would only be like maybe one or two songs on the album. You know what I'm saying? So to get that record with Mystic, I was cool with that. 
know what I'm saying? But the second album, man, we want, you know, we opened up the we opened up the reins when we started, you know, dealing with different producers. You know, we got to deal with Rick Rock, you know, for the second album. I wish we could have got at least, you know, before it all went to shit, you know, maybe one or two of those singles out from the second album. It may have, you know, put a different statement on what happened with the first project. You know what I'm saying? So, but to work with, you know, the Rick Rock, you know, um, I wanted to get with Tone Capone. You know, he's a close friend. Um, I wanted to get with Torre, you know, for the second album. I wanted to, you know, get home and then reach out. You know what I'm saying? You know, further across the water and such. But it never got to touch that. You know what I'm saying? So we got to ride the wave, you know, for the Bums album. And it's still, you know, the wave is still there. You know what I mean? For the Bums and, you know, we're going to eventually drop something just to let Nick motherfuckers know that, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> We still here. You still can't fuck with us. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So right. we're still around. And Evolve is worse than he was then. <laughs> you ah. know what I'm saying? So, so right. imagine that. Um, when the album dropped, the reviews came out. Source Magazine gave it three mics. Uh, what was your response and reaction to uh, some of the reviews coming out? Uh, well, my source, my source rating gave it, gave us. I think it was. Four, I think I got it right there in that box, and I can show you that. Um, it got more ratings than that. Uh, three, I, th I thought. It, I thought we hit more than that. I think it was like four and a half or some shit like that. But in the source, in the source, but whatever. You know, what I'm saying I'll take it. You know, um, yeah. But you know, being a group from the Bay Area to get source quotable in the source, I take that all day. You know, what I'm saying I don't care if it was from Vols vocals right. or mine. It was the bums, and you know, and back then to get. Um, source quotable you know you got to be heavy with lyrics you know you got to be you got to come from some lyrical context so you know i appreciated that you know what i'm saying the, the, the quotable and the the, the the ratings in the source that's just one magazine you know what i'm saying There's yeah one, so one, more one reviewer that's... yeah that's just one magazine right you know what i'm saying we was many more magazines when we was getting four and a half you know uh five stars you know what i'm saying if you go into any if you google the bums and you look at any of those, you know, articles about anything, you'll never see nothing negative, you know what I'm saying, uh, to this day. You know, if you do, it's like one in a million, you know what I'm saying. We were humble, wholesome, you know, rap niggas. We, we you know, we was out here, we, we, we were peace. You know, we didn't want no static. We just wanted to get our music out there and let you know that cats from Oakland can run. And that's all we wanted to do. You know what I'm saying? We were under, uh, you know, being being from Oakland, we were under madness. You know what I'm saying? We had just had the few years before the Cypress, the big earthquake. You know what I'm saying? We, we've been through some things. You know what I'm saying? So this disaster that we're in right now, we were in a disaster in the big quake that was a pandemic then. You know what I'm saying? It was power out. It was deaths, hundreds. You know what I'm saying? And, and to go through, to be here still, to go through what we're going through now, you know, I could deal with this shit. I'm tough. I could deal with it. Right. So after the Life and Times album, where is uh, D.Y.'s at mentally going into the second album? Oh, I was ready to, you know, let that shit out. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, the, the first album, you know, it, it touched us on that on that stair step. And now, we, you know, we're walking through that door. And so we, I was like, I was ready. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, they always tell you your second album is your shit. You know what I'm saying? And so we got the right, and we wanted to make sure that we kept it hip hop and out of the box, but we also wanted to bring it home. So we started, so we took some producers from home. You know what I'm saying? Lon and Dre, Rick Rock. I wanted to reach out to Torre. Um, you know, just a bunch of cats from home. You know what I'm saying? And then bridge that gap with what we usually do with them digging in the crates records, so on and so forth. Right now, we got a record called The Outside Looking In 
that we did a while back that we dropped right now. You, that's all I got to say. That's <laughs> all I got to no. say. We dropped that record. It, it, it'll open up the gates like, oh, yeah, them motherfuckers ain't lost. They ain't lost a step. They ain't lost one step. We actually, like, back in the day, they said we were ahead of our time being that young. That's because of the cats we were around. You know what I'm saying? So being able to see DJs, you know, DJs making break beats and going to studios. I was been in the studio since I was 16 years old. <laughs> so seeing that kind of shit was like going, like going to sit on the toilet. It was like home. You know, you know, you know what to do. So if you imagine what we was then, can you imagine what we are now? So right. and we just the same, same dudes that we was then. Was that your last project as a duo? What was that? The second album. Yeah, Life and Time Two. Yeah, that was that was that was the second album. You know what I'm saying? We wanted to keep it going on. We didn't want to really really want to do like a trilogy. You know what I'm saying? Keep it with Life and Time One, Life and Time Two. You know, the Life and Time was basically telling you everybody like what we went through to get where we are, and the Life and Time Two was basically telling you where we are and where we're trying to get to. You know what I'm saying? So, and then after that, you, you, you couldn't imagine what we was going to get into then. You know, we would have been able to get all kind of features that we wanted to get. You know, I always wanted to do a, a record with Casual. He's my favorite rapper from the Bay, hands down. Right. Salute. I wanted to do a record on the album with Cas. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, those are, those are moves that we didn't get to make during that process, you know what I'm saying, because of what happened, you know what I'm saying, which is, you know, it's too much to go into. Don't really, you know, it's nothing bad, but, you know, shit happens in the game, you know what I'm saying, and I don't want to, I didn't never want to be one of those rappers from a group who say we were one hit wonder, you know what I'm saying, and, you know, even though politically, correctly, that's what they say, but nah, we ain't one hit wonders, we still got a bunch of hits, so. Right. Well, cool. Uh, it was always a, a classic album, and that your, both of your projects were always uh, stellar to me. Um, at this point, you are assigned to Bentley Records. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah. I, um, I started doing these. I started writing again. You know, once my oldest, my youngest daughter got out of high school, I said I'm gonna go ahead and step my feet back in the water. You know, since my, you know, my, you know, my parental duties are never done, but they're, they're you know, they're grown now, so I can get back and get the wiggling you know, in the music while I still, you know, just still got the gallant talent, you know, at the level that I, that I could still do it at. So I started doing these videos. I started recording and I started making these little videos. Like after I record the record, I come and I make these videos and I got a buzz on it. And uh, Bentley Records, you know, got at me a few times. I was like, you know, I didn't know if it was real or not. And so they got at me and they got at me a few, a couple of times. And then I, I went on and said, okay, let's see what, what we're talking about. So, we start going back and forth via email, and um, next thing you know, maybe the third or fourth email, they was like, you know, we want to offer you a distribution and marketing deal. We really think we can do something, you know, to help you get to a, you know, a wider audience with your music and really get you on a higher platform. And so I, you know, I have to sit down. I talked with, you know, with my circle, and uh, and really thought about it. And I was going like, yeah, fuck it, man. I mean, I can't really lose. You know what I'm saying? You know, um, it felt good that somebody's you know interested in shooting a deal at me, so I went on to sign the ink, and and now I've been you know I already put in all the work. Now I'm just trying to put everything in, in, in formation, so I can start making my moves. You know what I mean? So everything will be lined up. My ducks is in a row. Uh, I don't have to worry about anything as far as like you know, get everything as far as the samples, get all that shit cleared. So when I when I when I when I drop, there's no no hitch. It's no hitch. It's just like get them. And I got a and I got a bunch of shit. <laughs> I got a bunch of shit. Shout out to Poetic Beats. Shout out to Mulatte. Shout out to CMT Miraculous. I got a bunch of shit. Just let you know. <laughs> How has your uh, lyrics and subject matter changed since being on lockdown? <sighs> course you know it gets it gets on a, on a high level because i got more to think about you know what i mean i got i got to worry about society 
you know, as you know, as dealing in, in, in society, you know, every time I walk out of the door, you know what I'm saying, is you know, everybody, 